Hey YouTube, how you doing? So here's a new video. In this video we're going to start fitting some GPM upgrades to my Armour Creighton. So first things first, front chassis brace. And there we have it, GPM front brace installed. Slightly disappointed I lose my beautiful little cable tidy hook that's on there. You don't get that on the aluminium one, but hey. So up next is going to be the steering. This is a plastic mount. You can probably see there's a lot of flex in this thing. And again, shame, shame I haven't decided to uh, go that direction, but hey. Just serve her straight through. Yeah. Oh, look at that result. We don't need to take it all out. Excellent. So, wibbly wobbly. Speaking a uh, survey mount. Goodbye. <clears throat> Instead, as a replacement, we have the GPM survey mount. Comes with the steel posts and the aluminium part in the back. And we've also got a steering horn kit with possibly a little kind of gold coloured spring in there as a service over here it is in it. That's pretty nice. You can see on one side of the plate, these holes have got a kind of recess. And on the other side, there's a countersink. <clears throat> it turns out the post will only fit into that recess one way around, and then it has a little boss on the other end, which is too big to fit in there. So you, you literally can't get this assembled incorrectly. It's, it's literally impossible. So we're going to screw the posts on first then mount the servo, and then screw the whole assembly back into the car. Don't forget the thread lock. I do like the fact as well, all of these GPM parts are coming with brand new stainless steel screws. They're not the best quality screws in the world, but it's nice that they come with hardware, you know, a lot of other cars don't. That's good. As I'm going to be changing out the servo for a better one at some point in the future, I'm just going to stick with the black hardware and the little rubber mounts for now instead of using the fancy new steel ones. Uh, when I install the new servo, I'll probably swap over to that hardware. Stick the steering trim to the centre. Not keen. It's the one thing I don't like about this tactic radio. Uh, it feels nice in the hand. It's nice and small and lightweight. I like the fact that the steer wheel doesn't stick out too far because you can actually drive it with one hand. But you can't on a lot of controllers. One thing that lets it down is these steering trims. There's no marker to tell you where the centre is. They're just very small and fiddly and yeah, not not overly keen on the trims. So that's all the way that way. It's kind of pointing at the T of the ST. 
and all the way that way it points to the M. So straight down, I assume, is centered. Uh, yeah, must be, must be there. Servo is now centered. Oh, bugger. oh, by the way, this is a little servo saver piece here. There's a little spring in there. Again, helps to um, save the gears in your servo if you do have a big impact. Uh, get that as centered as possible. That looks pretty bloody good. Retains. Okay. And there it is. And there's that other spacer. And then we've got the front suspension parts. I'm going to be doing this part next. Bushings, brass bushings in the steering. I'm surprised. You thought they would have put bearings in there, but no. You've got brass bushings. They're probably adequate, to be honest. You could always upgrade those at a later date if you wanted to. So that's the original plastic little servo saver assembly. And, um,. That is nice and tight. That's to be said, that is nice and tight, but inevitably, the parts where the part where this V is, I mean, it's already starting to distort slightly. Inevitably, that part is going to wear out and, and, and cause you a lot of problems with this thing flexing all the time. So, I'm um, happy, happy to see that go. Let's take the spring off. Remember, that goes that way. I need to keep this part to reassemble it. So the first thing that goes all back on is going to be that part. So you can see one of these has the uh, has a flat end, and one of them has a captive nut end. And that must fit in the captive nut end. Followed by this bit. Now, do these only fit one way around? No, these can go either way. And we need to make sure. <coughs> this is where we need to make sure we get this right. Does it go that way? Or does it go that way? That was a bit of a faff, but we got there in the end. So, um, basically, this is the way the assembly should look when it's complete. Um, <clears throat> the arms bend toward the middle and then out again on both sides. And they both need to be the same height. So with the two poles, you know, with those two at the same height, that thing needs to be at the same height. Obviously if you've got one upside down, it doesn't work. I screwed the servo saver back on and I wound it right the way to the top so it's as hard as it possibly can be. And we've already got a servo saver on the on the top of the servo there, so this bit I don't want this bit to wear out, so I don't want it to move unless it really has to. Um and again the sequence of nuts and washers and stuff that you put on here is of extreme importance. So it's the longer of the two screws that you get in the kit, the set countersunk screws, those are the ones that go in here. You have the cupped washer. Go through the barn. You need to see the the raised section, the raised machine section of this bar. It needs to be visible from the top, not from the bottom. The bottom's flat. So we have the long countersunk screw, the flat washer. You then have a brass bushing, and the large flange section has to be on the bottom. So you push the bushing in from underneath, and then the 
nut and washer from the top and then it screws in and because they're the longer ones they actually screw all the way into the body so that was um obviously these gpm parts don't come with any instructions so it takes a little bit of figuring out so hopefully that will help somebody else in the future um again didn't come with any bearings or anything in the packet so we're gonna have to reuse the uh brass bushings in the, in the top and bottom of these posts um not ideal would have been nice to see a bearing in there but to be honest with you the brass bear the brass um bushings are going to be just fine they will last a long 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 time all they're doing is turning on that little um steel post so it's going to be an awfully long time before they need to be replaced So then, next thing is to jiggle this back into place on here. Just take a little bit of jiggling just to get it past there. Get it, make sure it's seated on its bearings, which it is. Reattach the top bearing. The bearing goes in the top of there. We now have steering. Don't forget on this, this little link arm it needs to go underneath <coughs> the servo arm on the original one. Uh, it's this way around. So the original servo arm, oh yeah, it mounts underneath. Right. Underneath the servo arm and then on top of the actual steering arm. Plate, put this back. I'm migrating at least. I've got two different size washers here. I've got these little two little thin ones and this slightly thicker one. The thicker one went to the front section of the wishbone here and the two thinner ones go behind it there. Took a little bit of time, took about an hour to fit those steering, those steering parts. All in all I had to go and take a look at the drawing, take a look at the photo that was from the place I bought it just to see which way certain things went. But it's all in there now so let's see if it actually works. Hey. So uh, we're going to crack on with the rebuild and try some other bits. And, uh, I'll report back once I've run it actually outside to see if this servo is actually working or not. Okay, so the next stage is going to be doing the differentials and I think we're going to start with the centre diff. <clears throat> now, to get the centre diff out you first have to take this little uh, roll cage type thing off. Um, it's held on with uh, there's two little pins that go through here, one at the front and one at the back, held in with these little body clip type pins. So the idea is it's quite tight in there. You pull out the little R pin, and then it's a tight fit here. It does have to kind of rub over the head of the um, ESC. Uh, I have taken this off before and it does come out with a little bit of jiggling. And then it kind of rocks to the side. Now on this back one I notice I've actually this little R clip is actually missing on this one. It's fallen out at some point, I've not noticed. So not a big deal. I can replace that. There's four screws on the top to take this top cover off. part comes off, there's the spur gear and your differential which is you can see there this front one's do up nice and tight that little crack as I release it's the uh, thread lock releasing the rear ones are just plastic it did come out, which is good. I'm not sure if that's going to come out or not. If this one will. No, that came out nicely, which was good. I think one of those is badly threaded. So as you take this out, the two drive shafts drop out. Oh wait, no, yeah. This diff housing is part of the motor mount as well, so there is another screw up here. Pull. 
this out. I'm going to take the motor off. I'm just going to do this. I'm just going to unplug the motor. And there's the differential with the rubbish plastic hub carrier that we're going to replace and the crappy plastic thingamajig there. So to get into it, you can see I've marked here that I fitted the 100k in. Um, but it's proven to be not quite thick enough to still diff out to the front more than I would like, so we're going to take this apart. Before I do that, because it's going to get messy. You should be able to see as I take this apart. Here's my lovely gooey differential oil. Um, and you can feel it, man, that's quite hard. There's definitely quite a lot of drag on that as you try and turn it. Um, I say, I didn't fully clean this out when I uh, redid the diff oil last time. I just wiped as much of it out as I could. We're going to go with the Huddy 1 million CST silicon oil. Get the worst of it. Not too bad. Not appear to, so I'll give this a clean. screws, I do like the fact that you get all those new screws with the GPM stuff. No, this one doesn't come with that little washer. It's just a little iron. <coughs> Stop the grease coming out. I'll fit that in there. <coughs> oh dear, excuse me. <coughs> Here. Probably a good idea to wear gloves for this, to be honest. And, uh, pin ring feels okay, so we'll reuse that. Push it through, make sure that rubber ring is nice and flat down there. And the tricky part is getting this pin getting that little pin to go back inside that little hole. This is sometimes tricky. There you go. Get the pin back in like that. <coughs> We've got the diff in the new case. The gear in the new case, I mean. Now comes the worst part is trying to clean these little gears. This is always manky. Okay. And get the um, worst of it off just with the paper towels. So we're going to go 
half of the one million honey oil. This could take a while. <laughs> I mean, that just the. <coughs> <coughs> That literally is doing nothing. You can see that. That's literally wind it up like a treacle. It's very, very, very thick. I'm just going to try and force this into the case. Not easy to fill these things, it's really not. With this for super thick fluid. And again, it doesn't have to be completely full to the top, just get as much in there as you can. There you go, that's pretty much full now. to try and align gears they do kind of self align to a certain degree again it's time you're gonna get messy no way no way around it Second one. <clears throat> so there we go. So this is now completely full. Reese. I'm going to reassemble the case. You can see the excess grease will actually squeeze out of those little holes there. <coughs> so if you look through the case, get one of the holes lined up like that um, now the new screws are a different length to the old ones so we'll use the new ones but now I'm going to try it without the thread lock Let's see how we get on <coughs> once you've got one side on and that Starts to ooze out like that. You obviously can then clear out the hole on the opposite side. She's a little key. Clean that out. You don't want any hydraulic issues. Get those two done up tight. <clears throat> I just got the two in that are done up tight. You can then clear the oil, excess grease and oil away from the other two. And then it'll be time to go back in. So we've got the diff now 
fully rebuilt. It's really stiff and out. It's really super stiff to turn, which is exactly what I was going for. And as you can see, I've marked it up as having one million the fluid in there because I'm going to order some machines in <clears throat> and redo the front and rear and I'll redo this one again once, uh, once I've got the shims so for now we're going to put this back together again and <clears throat> and we're going to fit the rear uh, alloy housing to replace that plastic one which is rubbish Tight fit that. <clears throat> so the, the wider end goes to the chassis plate, and the narrower end is the one that screws back into this plastic part. So this is pretty much uh, me done for today. <clears throat> um, we've got the centre diff installed. Uh, but I don't have the correct shims to shim it today. Uh, so I haven't done the front and rear ones yet. Uh, that will have to be for a later video. Uh, you'll also notice I've got the original shock back on there again. Uh, I do like the look of them. I definitely think they're more robust, so I will be trying these at some point, but I don't have a suitable shock oil to fill these today, so we're back to the standard ones. <coughs> All the rest of the upgrades went in without too much trouble. You can see off camera, I fitted the uh, toe links, one on the back, ones at the back that act as upper su uh, suspension arms, and the ones at the front that control the steering. Uh, one thing to think about when you install these things, <coughs> also gonna, these ones are adjustable, and uh, you might be able to see the amount of rear camber we've got going on there. There's quite a significant amount of rear camber going on there because I have yet to adjust these toe links. Uh, they're very, very easy to adjust. Just find a suitable size screwdriver or whatever, put it in the little hole. And then you can uh, turn the tail links to either increase or decrease the size. So we'll do that to get the correct uh, amount of camera on there. I managed to sort out weight issues I was having with the steering. The steering is nice and free now. There's actually uh, the screw here that butts up against the, the pivot ball. It was way too tight. That's why the steering was uh, jamming up. And um, yeah, it's going to be interesting to take this thing out. I've got my smaller 4S battery in there. And, uh, got high hopes for this battery tray. It's going to work out a lot better than the old one. And um, I'm going to take it out on some loose rough surfaces tomorrow. So I've got the big Joes on here. Um, so that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. And I'll see you on the next one.